Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a review of Software Development Process, which is CS6300 in Georgia Tech's Online Masters in Computer Science program. Some of you guys may know that I took this class alongside CS6601, which is Artificial Intelligence. So even going into the semester, I knew that I wasn't going to be spending a lot of my time focused on this class, since so much of my time would have to be devoted towards Artificial Intelligence, which is known for being a much more time-intensive class. I'll try my best to review it, but keep in mind that I went into the semester already being a software developer as my full-time job, plus I had a CS degree as my bachelor's degree, so I kind of took this class as just something to augment my other class for the semester. Before we dive too deep into it, let's take a look at OMS Central to see how others have felt about the class. So it says here that the average difficulty is reported to be around 2.3 out of 5. I would probably have to agree with that number, though I'm sure people that have software development experience and had really good group mates felt that it was probably easier than a 2.3, though in other cases people think it's probably a lot harder if they have very little Java and software development process experience. The average workload is reported to be 9 hours a week, and in my experience, it was definitely much lower than that, probably around the 5 to 7 range, and the average rating is 3.64 out of 5. The professor for this course is Dr. Orso, and he seems like a really nice guy. He's definitely by far and away the most engaged and interactive professor that I've had in the program thus far. He's really, really good about answering questions on Piazza, and he has his office hours every week. I will say that I did not attend any of his office hours just for the sake of my own time because obviously when you go to office hours you have to sit and hear other people's questions which may not pertain to the question that you have. So I ended up not attending any of them, but I do respect that he is doing office hours every week and if you want to ask a question directly to him, you can. He does all the lecture videos which are probably a couple years old since they're still available on Udacity as well as Georgia Tech's internal Canvas media player. I have to say that I didn't really watch more than maybe 60% of the lecture videos since I only watched the lecture videos that I needed to in order to complete the homeworks. The grading scale is probably one of the biggest qualms that I had about the class, as well as I didn't necessarily enjoy a lot of the assignments. The grading scale, for my semester at least, was as follows. I'll actually break down what each one of these gradebook items is, but in general you'll see that there's no midterm and there's no final, so that's definitely one major plus for this course. Participation is basically free points. I think all you have to do is just click through the lecture videos on Canvas so they get marked as complete, and then answer the lecture quizzes that come up sometimes. You also might have to be active on Piazza, I'm not really sure how they decide if you're an active participant on Piazza, but basically I just asked like four questions throughout the semester on Piazza and got given 100 on the participation grade. Assignment 1 isn't really an assignment either, it's basically just filling out a survey with your availability and they use that to pair you with other members for the group project down the road. Assignment 2 is the first like actual assignment and it's Git usage. And I think this is really useful if you haven't used Git before. In my case, I had used Git and I did kind of get exposed to a couple of new Git commands that I wasn't used to, but I don't think it's going to change my workflow really of basically Googling it if I don't know. And then next up is assignment three, which is the first real like programming assignment. So that's basically a simple leak code Java string question. It's probably considered a leak code easy and it kind of was a wake-up call <laughs> that I need to practice leak code and algorithm questions because I haven't done any like interview prep like that in a long, long time, or really ever. But it shouldn't be that difficult for most people, and you also have to write a couple JUnit tests for it, and then it gets graded on Gradescope against some hidden tests that they have written. So overall, I think the first three grades are pretty easy, and you should be able to get 100 or close to 100 with minimal effort. Assignment 5 is the next assignment and that is the design assignment. 
you're asked to create a UML diagram for an Android app, which eventually would be the Android app that you make in a group project the next couple weeks. I really did not get anything out of this assignment and I didn't enjoy it at all. My biggest qualm with it is that the instructions were very vague. So looking at the assignment, it said to identify and refine the Java classes, attributes, operations, and relationships in the UML diagram. But it also said that we don't have to show any purely specific GUI classes or support layers. We we're also supposed to show a class that represents the entry point into the system that ties the various pieces together. In general, very vague and confusing instructions to me. I ended up getting 75 and the only comment was incorrect syntax. So didn't learn anything and they didn't release an actual UML diagram that received 100%. So I still have no idea what we were supposed to do there. It's only 2% of your grade though, so it doesn't really matter from a grade standpoint. Now going into the group project phase, which is probably around the next four or five weeks, the first step is obviously to meet with your group mates and figure out a good cadence and way of communication. But then you use your UML diagram that you made in the previous assignment and compare it with the UML diagrams that your group mates came up with. And then in theory, you're supposed to select the best one, designate it as the team's UML diagram. And then when you spend the two or three weeks, I think it's around two weeks actually, making and implementing the app, you can use that UML diagram as a reference. But the problem is nobody understood how we were supposed to make the UML diagram. So our UML diagram was pretty broken, I think. So none of us consulted it at all when making the Android app. I will have to say no knock to my teammates at all. I think they would have to agree that we weren't the strongest team and that nobody had strong mobile app development skills. Most of us were early in our careers, I guess, or very limited software development experience, at least in this realm. And at this point, I was super, super busy with the AI course and with like my normal work. So I barely could devote the time. I probably did four hours a week during the development phases for the Android app, plus the time that we spent each week meeting. So probably around six hours a week during the development phases of the app. And overall, I think we did okay. We got like an 82 because we had some bugs and we didn't update our .md like document files. After the group project, you also get a grade for your participation, which is 10% of your grade. And I think that's just based off how you and your other group mates rank yourself. So you do a little survey ranking your participation as well as the teammates. The next and final assignment is assignment six, which covers white box testing. And this is an assignment that can kind of make or break your final grade to a certain extent because it's worth 15% of your final grade just from this assignment alone. I definitely don't agree that it should be worth this much because I don't think white box testing is worth that much or is tested in that much detail in industry. And the way that they ask the questions about white box testing were really tricky and not really indicative of a good functional understanding, in my opinion. The type of questions and the way that they asked it was very much focused on edge cases and it was almost to the point of like, it gave me flashbacks of when I was learning discrete math in college and propositional logic because you're really focused on if it's possible to really come up with something that meets the constraints that they provided. In general, I don't think people care about the difference between you know, branch coverage, path coverage, and whatnot to the extent that they really tested us on. So I wasn't very happy with assignment overall. The final portion of the class is devoted to the individual project, and that individual project is worth 25% of your grade. It's four weeks and there are four deliverables, so one deliverable a week. I don't actually think it was publicized as to how much each deliverable was weighted into that total individual project grade, but I'll briefly touch upon what each deliverable was in our, in our experience this semester. So the first deliverable was to use a very old, it seems like outdated tool that generated every possible permutation of scenarios that you input. And basically the goal is to use those in the second deliverable in which you actually write the Java J unit test suites based off those permutation of scenarios that you created in deliverable one. You're graded on Gradescope for deliverable two based on the number of scenarios that you wrote test suites for 
compared against the number of relevant scenarios that they've identified. They don't actually tell you which ones you're missing, so obviously you could be chasing those rare scenarios for hours and hours, but in general, I just figured, you know, as long as I test the main functionality, it's fine. And I didn't really care if I just settled for, you know, like an 80 something on these ones. The third deliverable is to actually implement the program that you wrote the test suites for. On this one, you're graded on Gradescope both against uh, your own test suites, so obviously you should pass those since you have access to them, but also the test suites that the instructors wrote, and you don't have access to those. So again, you could be spending a lot of time chasing these edge cases and trying to make your program solve those without actually having access to be able to see those test suites that the instructors wrote. So you could spend a ton of time chasing these rare cases. Again, I didn't want to spend too much time. So once I got up to like 85%, I settled. And then the fourth deliverable is pretty easy. All you're doing is just refactoring your code so your program can be called as if it were an API. And again, I didn't bother uh, chasing those last edge cases, so I think I was at an 88 or so and didn't really bother trying to implement any functionality to handle these weird edge cases. In general, it certainly can be a very tedious process, and if you really want to get 100, I could see how it would be worth hours and hours of time, but I really would recommend just kind of taking into account the number of hours that it may take to try and come up with these edge cases that they're testing for, is probably not worth the, you know, 5% total for the individual project difference. So overall, I would have to say that I did not enjoy this class. I think if you're a software developer with experience already, you're not going to learn much and the things that you do learn aren't going to be enough to change your current workflow and your current habits. On top of that, you're going to be sus subjected to a lot of tedium with the assignments and a kind of arbitrary grading scale that I didn't agree with. But on the flip side, I do think that there's a very good market for this course if you're one of those people that kind of have development experience but you haven't really worked on a software development team with others using tools like Git and GitHub or if you really want to get exposed to the full software development process and really focus on writing tests and test-driven development, there's definitely a lot of value that can be delivered with this course. The instructor is definitely very engaged and I like that this course is a little bit backloaded since a lot of the courses that I've taken thus far have been front heavy. So it's really all about just knowing what you're getting into when you're signing up for the class.